Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Vish and today we're going to be tier ranking all the books I've read so far in 2021. I'm so excited, I've never done a tier ranking video. So we'll see how this goes, shall we? I picked tier ranking instead of the tag that everyone usually does just because I want to showcase all the books I've read so far this year and I feel like the tag doesn't do that job. So that is why I picked tier ranking. And I saw Brittany from Books with Brittany do this and it kind of sparked the idea. So all credit to her and I will link her channel down below for you to check out. Okay, so I have read 55 books since from January to June. I'm only doing those six months because you know, half of the year, six months. So January to June, I've read 55 books and I'm only going to showcase 44 books because 10 of those books are rereads and I'm not going to showcase rereads because they're my favorites and doesn't stand a chance really the other books. So I'm basically going to tier rank 44 books and I think I'm pretty pleased with myself because my goal for the year was one book. I didn't put a goal for the year because I knew I could read 100 books based on last year and has nothing's really changed this year. Uni last year, uni this year hasn't changed so I just thought hey Let's just cruise along. And I am cruising along, which is great. And from these 44 books, I've actually added books I've read for uni as well for the last six months. And I think going forward, I'm not going to do that because like it's not fun reads. Unless it's a fun read, then I will add it to my like Goodreads goal and like the wrap ups and stuff like that. But other than that, I'm not gonna include it. It's kind of like boring shit. Unless I find it interesting and like, I think you all should read it, I will mention it. However, I have included my uni books for the last January to June. So bear that in mind, let's go through my ranking system thing with you. Hopefully I've done this right and you should be able to see the tier ranking recording that I have on my laptop. So I have one, two, three, four, five ranks and these as you can see are based off of Ariana Grande songs because I am Ariana Grande trash. So the first one just like magic is obviously top tier because just like magic and the second one in my head is basically books that I think about all the time but they're not my absolute favorites like they live in my head rent free and I think about them all the time. And then we have Thank You Next and these are just books that like I had a good time and it's not really like remember remember the bleh, bleh. <laughs> either way they don't stick in my head as much as the other books and I had a good time and then I'm just gonna say thank you next you know the next one better off um these are the books that are basically not for me and I think other people might enjoy it because I didn't enjoy it so that is the category for that and obviously the bottom category bad idea <laughs> is that it's just a bad idea to read it, you know? So those are the five rankings. So let's work through our first book. Ooh, A Court of Civil Flames by Sarah J. Mass. Where would I put it? Where would I put it? I'm gonna put in my head. Look, I love Sarah J. Mass so, so much. But this is, I think, not one of my favorite ones just because Sarah J Maas is known for her romance based plot and also fantasy plot like The Throne of Glass is a mix of both whereas Akatar is more romance plot than fantasy plot but there is some plot whereas A Court of Civil Flames did not have that and that was a bit sad but the characterization of Nesta and Cassian are my absolute favorite. It's not five star quality. I actually gave it 4.75 because of the whole plot thing. So I'm going to put it in my head because I think about it all the time, obviously. Uh, the next three books, let's go one, two, three, and four because they're all in the same series. It's the Charlie Travesty series by Jesse Elliott and KJ Sutton. This is a uh, new adult romance, self-published, and they're kind of like short novellas, but if you put them all together, they make a book. So they were released separately every few weeks, but the whole arc of these four books make one book, if that makes sense. So I'm going to rank them together 
And the first one is a whisper in the dark. I'm gonna put thank you next. The second one is a light in the dusk, memory in the flame, and smoke in the sacrifice. I'm gonna put them in thank you next because I do really, really have a good time and I do really like the characters, but I feel like I need more to make it go up to the next level of in my head or just like magic. And I just finished the fifth book, Song in the Night, and I think the series as a whole will stay in Thank You Next, I'm pretty sure. Now the next one, A Touch of Darkness by Scarlett St. Clair. This is also a new adult fantasy romance. Uh, it is self-published and it's a Hades and Persephone retelling and I actually really enjoyed it. However, it is not in my head or just like magic material, therefore it'll go in Thank You Next. I really like the characters, they really embody Hades and Persephone, but the smut was just all over the place sometimes. It is good smut, but it's just very random at times. And there were a few things where I had a bit of a cringe moment. So I gave this four stars. It was not bad. It was just a good time. And I'm not gonna continue with the series just because I like the way it ended. It kind of ended, it's a close ending basically. So I don't have to continue the series if I don't want to. So I'm just gonna do that. Also, I apologize if you can hear rattling. It's really windy outside and my windows rattle. The next one is Are You My Mother by Alison Beck Beckdell, I think that's it. Um, it is a graphic novel memoir that I read for uni and this is a different cover by the way, it's not, that's not the cover. But I think I'm gonna put it in better off, like I gave this a one star. I had to force myself to read this for uni, but I think someone else would enjoy it more than I do because I'm not a big fan of memoirs unless I know the person it's about. So the whole memoir is about the author and how she wrote her previous book and her relationship with the parents and mental health and stuff like that. And I don't know that author, so I'm not really interested in knowing about that person's life, if you know what I mean. But I do appreciate the mental health discussion in this. She really critiqued her mental health and tried to work it out. I like the process that she had with trying to understand what she's feeling. It was a really interesting read, but it's just not for me. So it's gonna go in the better off category. Another one, Beverly by Nick Donasso. This is also another one I read for uni and this is a graphic novel and it's kind of very Black Mirror-esque. So I definitely recommend it if you like that type of thing, like Black Mirror kind of thing. It's very trippy. I'm gonna put that in thank you next. Now, this one's a bit controversial. So we have Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. This is a adult sci-fi thriller. And I read this in the month of June and I was so disappointed and it was just okay. And like the more I think about it, the more I don't like it. I gave it a three star and while I like the ending. Overall, it's just an okay story. I really did not like the main character and his motives were just so weird and certain things that like the direction the book took was just not a good time for me. So I'm gonna put this in bad idea just because I know a lot of people like this, but it's a sci-fi thriller. I wasn't thrilled. Sci-fi was interesting though. I know it should be in the better off category, but I feel like it's just a bad idea overall. So we have deeper here. I'm gonna do go deep first because these two go together. And the go deep novella, it is a new adult romance. And it's a, about this girl, a lady, sorry. And she's a erotica writer and she's had going through a little bit of a writing slump and in order to try and jumpstart that, she asks her best friend to sleep with her or teach her sexual stuff. <laughs> and it's such a good time. The character's chemistry is phenomenal. I absolutely loved it. And then deeper, it's like a novellette after the, the novella. And it's so, so adorable. If you haven't read this, I highly, highly recommend. And this will go to In My Head because I think about these two books all the time. And I really like Real Z Adams' writing style, so I'll definitely be checking out more of her books. Next is Endgame by Samuel Beckett. This is a really, really weird play. <laughs> if you've read this, let me know. But it's a really, really weird play, and I obviously read this for uni, I wouldn't pick it up normally. I'm gonna put it in my head, because I actually think about it a lot 
because it's such a weird play. Um, and then we have Fangs by Kate Anderson. This graphic novel is basically a romance between a werewolf and a vampire and it's so so sweet but it's not five star worthy material at least for me. I know a lot of other people have given it five stars but for me it was just a really really good time and it's so cute. And I'm just gonna put it in thank you next. The next ones are all Full Metal Alchemist volumes so I'm just gonna put this all in in my head because if you know if you've watched any of my wrap-ups in the last six months and also my last year wrap-ups you would know I really really love this manga series I've never read manga before Full Metal Alchemist so Full Metal Alchemist is my introduction to manga and I absolutely love it I love the two brothers they're so adorable and they've been through so so much and you would think it, because we're following two boys that it would be on the younger side but no it is definitely on the adult side because there's a lot of darker topics that they explore and I really love this manga series if you haven't read it I highly highly recommend it. Next we have is Golden Sun by Pierce Brown. This is the second book in the Red Rising saga because we have the first three books and then we have another two books that follow I think a different arc I'm not too sure. Golden Sun is essentially the second book in the series and it is an adult sci-fi novel based on revenge. Let's, let's go with that. So Golden Sun I gave it 4.5 stars. I really really enjoyed it. I loved the vibe that it had and like the energy that made me so hyped to read the book because there was this rebellion aspect of it and it made me feel very very rebellious. I loved it so much but it didn't have that five star thing overall. So I'm gonna put this in in my head. I haven't read the third book just yet but I really really want to just because the ending of Golden Sun was just a lot. Next is Heartstopper Volume 4 by Alice Ozen and this just goes to Just Like Magic because I absolutely loved this volume. I love Heartstopper. It is so adorable but also heavy and what I mean by that is like there's a lot of heavy topics within this graphic novel series but it's not taken lightly because that's that's the whole vibe of this whole graphic novel series. It's very lighthearted and cute and adorable but there's also a touch of heaviness to it because of the heavy topics of mental health and I really really love the balance of it that Alice Oseman has with this series and this is my favorite volume out of the four so it's going to Just Like Magic because it's my favorite. Next we have Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. The only Riley Sager books I've read is this and Lock Every Door by Riley Sager and I actually like this better than Lock Every Door and it's just a really really good is it paranormal is it not paranormal story. It's a haunted house story and it does that aspect so so well. I buddy read this with Victoria from a musical bookworm and link her channel down below. We had a really really good time reading this and it will always be in my head because there was this one scene that I always think about that creeps me out to this day. If you know what I'm talking about, it's a snake scene. I, it creeps me out to this day and I live in a country that has snakes, you know? I've never seen one in the wild here in Australia where everyone tells me it's like the most dangerous country because we have the most poisonous snake and the most poisonous spider. I have seen the spider. It's fine, I kill it. Snakes, I haven't seen one in the wild because I live in the city area, so snakes don't usually live here. But it's a possibility, you know? So it sticks in my head all the time. Just not that great, but you know, what are you gonna do? Next one is Love and Pajamas by Katana Chetwell, I think that's it. And I got this arc in the beginning of the year for Valentine's Day. And this is such a cute and adorable graphic novel. And it's just so relatable and that's what I really loved about it. It's just like different graphic scenes of just like things that you and your boyfriend or your partner does from day to day and it's just so re relatable. So I'm gonna put it in my head because I think about it all the time. Next we have Lucy by Jamaica Kincaid. This is a book, another book that I read for uni and I think this will go in Thank You Next because I enjoyed it while I read it and I wrote a essay about it at the end of the semester so I'm well versed with it but it was a good time. Wasn't a big fan of the character Lucy but 
I enjoyed it overall. I think I give it three stars. This is why I don't want to include uni books anymore just because I don't have much to say about them. They're just for uni. So unless it's interesting and I really like it, I'll add it into like my whole Goodreads and like my wrap up and everything. All right, look at this beauty. So this is Mallow Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And if you've seen my last wrap up, you know I love this book so much. I've read Daisy Jones and the Six and Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I enjoyed them both. I really like Seven Husbands more than Daisy Jones. Daisy Jones audiobook is really really good. I highly recommend you listen to the audiobook because it's told in an interview format. However, they were both five stars. But Melody Rising is just like top tier five stars. I loved the sibling relationships and their association and their love for the ocean and the water and I relate to that so so much and it was just told so beautifully too because they had dual timeline and this all takes place in a day like the present timeline takes place all in a day fast paced because of that dual timeline the sibling relationships are just so solid and so beautiful so I'm putting this in just like magic. I really want to reread it. I don't know if you can see it, but it's, oh no, it's right off camera, but it's like right here. If you haven't read it yet, I highly, highly recommend it. I know a lot of people don't like it. I've seen a couple of one stars and I'm like, why? But it's okay. You know, you have your opinion. I have my opinion. It's fine. It's fine. Next we have Malice by Heather Walter. I got this art, I think, in April or March, I'm not sure. And I read it and it was really, really good. It is an adult fantasy sleeping beauty retelling, but queer, we love that here. I was expecting something different going in, but I was satisfied by how it was told and the character of Alice, that's, that's the main character that we follow, Alice. And I was expecting something different with her character, but I was satisfied with who she was in the book. However, the ending is exactly the Alice that I wanted and I was satisfied with that as well. And I'm pretty sure it's a duology, so there's a second book coming out and I'm so excited for the second one. And I'm gonna put this in in my head because I really, really liked Malice. I liked it so much, I bought my own copy. Next one we have is Miss Marvel Volume 1 and I was in a rush reading this and I didn't really absorb it. I'm definitely gonna do a reread because I know they're going to be coming out with, I think a TV show, Miss Marvel, I think. They are, I think they're doing either the TV show or a movie called Miss Marvel. And I really wanna reread this and continue on with the comics so I can watch the TV show and movie. I'm a big, big Marvel fan, so I'm definitely gonna do it. But for now, I'm gonna put this in Thank You Next. It was a good time but I think I just needed to continue on with the volumes to get to know the character better a little bit and like the whole story a little bit more. So I'm just gonna put that in thank you next for now. Next we have Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. And I read this in the month of June as well and I gave this five stars. It was absolutely magical. And I really love the Stranger Dreamer duology, but I don't know why it's not. It's like one of my favorite series of all time, but it is, so so good and so beautifully written. So I don't know where to put Muse of Nightmares. I definitely like Muse of Nightmares better than Stranger Dreamer. However, I don't know if I should put it in in my head or just like magic because I really really loved it. I think I'm gonna put it in just like magic. It's so beautifully written and the characterization in this is absolutely perfect. Now we have Normal People by Sally Rooney. I read this for uni as well, which is really cool. But I hate miscommunication or the miscommunication trope and everything would be solved if you just talked about it. And I understand it's really hard for people to talk about things, emotions, feelings, whatever. But in a book, I would rather not read something that had the miscommunication trope or just miscommunication in general or just not talking about it in general. I don't prefer reading that, but I didn't know this had it. I know a lot of people like really love this book. I didn't, I really didn't. I think I gave it two stars. I was so, so frustrated with the two characters because they just didn't speak to each other. And I understand some people like other people in real life can't do that and that's fine. I just prefer not to read about it. I'm gonna put him better off because other people can enjoy this 
I, however, did not. Next up, we have Not Hungry by Kate Karis Quinn. And I also read this in the month of June to fulfill a prompt. It's not normally a book I would pick up, but it was there and it was a book told in verse and it was a really, really quick read. I really like the eating disorder representation in this and also the plus size rep in this. It was really, really good. And I'm gonna put this in thank you next as well because it was a really good time. I would recommend this if anyone wants a quick read and they wanna read a hard hitting contemporary book, YA contemporary book, this is your book. Have a gander. Next we have Obsidio by J. Christoph and Amy Kaufman. This is a YA sci-fi series, The Illuminae Files. And I wasn't a fan of Jamina. I think I gave it three stars. I think a very low three stars. Obsidio was definitely an improvement from that. It was good. It was a great, it was a good ending. But overall, it was just a thank you next book. It's not the best YA sci-fi series. Skyward by Brandon Sanderson is so far the best YA sci-fi book I've read, not Illuminae Files. I know a lot of people love Illuminae Files, that's fine. Just for me, it's not. It's a mixed media book and the audiobook, however, though, I would put it in, in my head because the audiobook is awesome. Next one, we have Second First Impressions. And I'm gonna put that in thank you next as well by Sally Thorne because I absolutely love The Hating Game. No one knows. I don't know how you don't know, but I love The Hating Game. And I think I had similar expectations for her new book, Second First Impressions. However, it is a soft romance, not an angsty dramatic drama romance, enemies to lovers romance like The Hating Game was. This one was a more softer romance and for what it was it was very very good but it was not what i was looking for i'm not such a big person on soft romance but sometimes when i'm in the mood for it i will pick it up but at that point i wasn't expecting it to be a soft romance and i wasn't in the mood for a soft romance therefore it got a four stars and it'll go and thank you next. Next off is Smart Ovens by Lonely People by Elizabeth Tan. This is another uni book that I read. This is a collection of short stories. And I'm gonna put that in thank you next. It also had a little bit of a Black Mirror vibes in certain short stories. Like they were washing machines eating up clothes and clothes going missing all over the world and washing machines are just eating them up for no reason. Like it just disappears in the washing machine. That kind of stuff. And next we have City of Brass and I'm gonna put that in in my head. I know you're expecting it in Just Like Magic however just just wait. So City of Brass is a the first book in an adult fantasy Middle Eastern adult fantasy. I gave this book 4.75 stars because it wasn't five star quality for me because it was kind of missing something and the first book is actually very, very different from the second and third. I'm actually reading the third right now. And City of Brass, it start out, starts off very, like on the younger side, but it's actually, yeah, I said adult fantasy. But it starts on the young, younger side and it really focuses on the romance and it's not, the romance is not the best, I will say. However, I'm, I'm warming up a bit in the third book, but in the first book, the romance is not it and there was not a lot of political intrigue like it was in the second book and it was just very very fast paced. Quite get the five stars so it's just gonna go in my head because I think about it all the time and we're gonna just continue on with Kingdom of Copper and that goes to just like magic because Kingdom of Copper was fucking awesome and I gave it five stars. I absolutely loved it. Kingdom of Copper is my ideal book. It has amazing characters, complex, unique, morally gray characters and they stick to their characterization and don't I guess change motives suddenly out of character. They stick to their characterizations and they make decisions based on their personality and all that. And then we have political intrigue. There's so many. I'm r I really apologize for the rattling. It's, it's gonna storm in a sec, that's why. As I was saying, the political intrigue, there's a few factions in Devabad and there's just a lot of political machinations within that faction and also different cultural aspects within the faction. So it's very, very unique and again, very complex. And the plot, the war, the angst, the drama, it's just chef's kiss. If you haven't read the Dave Abad trilogy, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Like from all these books that I've just said, 
read the Dave Abound trilogy. Next we have City of Stairs by Robert Jackson Bennett. I'm gonna put this in in my head. This is another adult fantasy. City of Stairs also focuses on like two different factions or countries that have been warring with, e with each other in the past and now one country is ruling the other and making them not slaves per se but control like really really controlling them like they're they're not allowed to talk about their gods their culture and certain things they can't do stuff like that. I really really love the characters the political intrigue is excellent I really need to continue with the second and third book I have the second book over here somewhere oh it's over here and I'm I believe each book follows a different character, but it's the same plot overall. Next, we have Crown of Gilded Bones by Jennifer Allen Almentrat, and that's just going to bad idea. This category was made for Crown of Gilded Bones by Jennifer Allen Almentrat. This is the third book in the From Blood and Ash series, and I really enjoyed From Blood and Ash and Kingdom of Flesh and Fire. This was such, such a disappointment. I've talked about this book so many times now, but the premise and the plot are so unique and so interesting, but the execution was just not, not there, not it. Like, I really, really wish she improves in the next ones because if she doesn't, I'm just gonna stop reading because I'm not gonna waste my time reading mediocre books. Like, I can't, I don't have the energy. Next we have The Good Neighbor by R.J. Parker. This is an arc I got from NetGalley as well and I'm gonna put that in thank you next. It's a really really fast-paced thriller and it's about this lady who breaks out on the side of the road and she goes to this house next door and she asks for help and the a man answers the door. She asks the man for help you know to call AAA or whatever to tow the car so she can go home and stuff. And he does that and all that and she goes home and the next day she comes back to thank that person and there's police cars everywhere around that house and she goes and she asks what happened to the man and the police says a man doesn't live here, a woman lived here and she was murdered. So she, uh, yeah, stuff goes down. Stuff goes down. It's very high stakes. It's very tense. It, I was on the edge of my seat for a lot of the time just because it's a high tense situation because of what happened, as I said. And it was really, really good. I really recommend reading this if you're looking for a really fast paced thriller that you want to be tense throughout. Have a read. Next is Helm of Midnight by Marina Lostetter and this is another arc that I got as well from NetGalley and this was so good. So this is pitched as it's Silence of the Lambs meets Mistborn and I highly agree because it is a adult fantasy horror book and I am trying to get into the subgenre of fantasy horror and this was my kind of first introduction to it and I absolutely loved it so much. It's kind of difficult to explain the I guess plot of it but we basically have these investigators investigating murder serial killers and this particular serial killer was a very famous serial killer back in the day and they executed him but now the murders are happening again. The way these murders are happening is based on the magic system and it's really really hard to explain because it is a very complex magic system like Mistborn is but it's so so fascinating and there are different perspectives that we follow and all these perspectives storyline come together in the end and it's so satisfying to see and it was really really well done however I feel like I needed a little bit more from the world building and I hope we get that more in the second book so I'm gonna put this in in my head because it wasn't quite five stars but it was really 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 good. I'm gonna put this in my head. Next we have The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. This is the first book pick of the Night Court Buddy Read that we do on my channel. Hello. If you want to participate in that, the Discord will be linked down below if you want to check it out. I read it for that Buddy Read and I gave it three stars. It was okay. I expected more from it because it's it's an adult fantasy and it's basically about this girl Addie who makes a deal with this dark presence that she wants to not get married and you know she would do anything not to get married. So she basically sells her soul to that dark presence and she gets to live forever. However, 
comma, no one gets to remember her. So every time she meets someone and then when she leaves the room, they forget about her. But one day, uh, 300 years later, she meets a person called Henry and he remembers her because she is 300 years old and she's traveled so so many places and we didn't even get that much places we got like i think like what three or four that's it and she's traveled so many places and i would have liked to seen more places plus more diverse people that she met not just france italy and america and the uk i think that's that's literally all she's gone to in that 300 years i just expected more from it and i didn't get it so it's gonna go on to better off. Other people can enjoy it. I'm just, I didn't. I also didn't think the writing was that beautiful. I'm sorry. <laughs> For me, I think Lainey Taylor was better. Aaron Morgenstern is better. It just wasn't for me. Then we have Power of Hades by Eliza Rain. This is a self-published, uh, I think, Hades and Persephone retelling, and this was just an okay retelling. Persephone is basically in the human world, and she's brought down to the underworld to go through these series of trials to become Hades' wife. However, Persephone already was Hades' wife, but he just she just doesn't remember that she was. But everyone in the underworld and like the gods and stuff, they know her and what she's done to be exiled to the human world, but she doesn't, but she still has to go through these trials to figure it out. So the first book is a really short book and everything was really, really rushed. Like her character relationships, like her relationship with a different person and I don't remember her name now, but Persephone's relationship with this other person and then also with Hades and is really insta-lovey for me. And I like longer characterizations. I like longer, like slow burn romance and this wasn't it for me. So I decided not to continue with the series, but it was still a good time. So I'm gonna put it in thank you next. Next we have the red pearl scene. I'm just gonna put that in thank you next. That is just the little snippet of like a novella just before From Blood and Ash and it's from Hawk's perspective and I really liked it. It's just a novella. So put in thank you next. Next we have The Starless Sea. This is a bit controversial as well. The writing was very very beautiful. I think I need a reread because I was so focused on trying to figure out what was happening and didn't really stop to enjoy the story and the writing and everything else overall. And I gave it a four stars. It was still really, really good and so beautifully written. And the story overall was also very smartly done because we have stories within stories and they all kind of line up at the end. However, I don't think about it that much and it's not five star or like top tier material. So I'm gonna put this in thank you next. So we'll, we'll just, yep. Cool. Next we have The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. And this is another book I read for uni. I did not expect the plot twist in this, but this was excellent and I think about it all the time. So it's gonna go in my head because it really lives my in my head rent free. And when I was trying to write my essay for this, I actually stumbled across a review that Codex Cantina wrote a review about this and I thoroughly enjoyed that video. So I will link their channel and that video down below for you to check out. They did an excellent job. Lastly, we have You and Me on Vacation by Emily Henry, also known as People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. This was just an okay romance for me. I wasn't a big fan. I know Abby, you were disappointed, but it was just an okay romance for me. And I'm not even gonna put in Thank You Next. I'm gonna put in Better Off because obviously it was for me. Other people liked it so much more and I was just okay about it. I wasn't really in love with the characters. The stakes for it was very weak in my opinion so I wasn't like invested because there's nothing to invest in because it was so weak. And here we have it. These are all the books that I read so far this year. I will have to admit I haven't had the best reading in the last six months just because I think I was just trying to read whatever I could instead of really thinking what I was picking up. However, it's really, really hard for me to pick a new favorite. I'm very, very picky when it comes to books being my favorite. That's why there's only very little up there. So there you have it. Those are all the 44 books I read, well, new books that I read in the last six months and I'm reading even more better books now because I'm on the third book of the David Bod trilogy and I'm really really enjoying it. I'm reading it slowly because I don't want it to end. I really do love this trilogy 
it is the highlight of my year but yeah guys that's that's literally it let me know some of your favorites this year so far let me know your least favorites this year do you agree on certain books that i've ranked in my tier ranking anyway guys like this video if you liked it subscribe if you wanna all my socials and all that linked down below for you to check out and thank you so so much for watching i hope you're having a good day and i will see you in my next one bye Wow.